This video defines orthogonal matrices and gives some properties of them. An orthogonal matrix is a square matrix with orthonormal column vectors. Recall that a set of vectors is orthonormal if every pair of vectors is orthogonal and each vector by itself has length 1. Recall that orthogonal means the same thing as perpendicular. It means the dot product of the two vectors is 0. So we could write this first condition in terms of dot product as saying that vi dotted with vj has to be 0, uh, where vi and vj are any two distinct column vectors of the matrix. This second condition that each column vector has length 1 can also be written in terms of dot product since the length of a vector squared is the same thing as the dot product of the vector with itself. So saying that the length has to be 1 is the same thing as saying that the length squared has to be 1 or saying that the dot product of the vector with itself has to be 1. So let's verify that this matrix B is an orthogonal matrix. So first we need to check that each pair of column vectors is orthogonal. So I'm going to give these column vectors names. I'm going to call them uh, this one C1 vector, this one I'll call it C2, and this one I'll call it C3. So we need to check that C1 dotted with C2 is 0, that C1 dotted with C3 is 0, and that C2 dotted with C3 is 0. So for example, if I want to do the first one, C1 dotted with C2 is this vector dotted with this vector. So that's going to be 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 6 minus 1 over root 3 times 2 over root 6 plus 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 6 which adds up to 1 minus 2 plus 1 over root 3 root 6, which adds up to 0, as we want it to. I'll let you verify for yourself that these other two dot products are also 0. So the column vectors are all orthogonal. Now let's, all, let's check that they all have length 1. Or equivalently, we could check that the dot product of each column vector with itself equals 1. For example, if we take c1 dot with c1, that's going to be 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 3 plus minus 1 over root 3 times minus 1 over root 3 plus 1 over root 3 times 1 over root 3, which adds up to 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third, which is indeed 1. And I'll let you verify that the other two columns also have length 1. So B is indeed an orthogonal matrix. Let's see what happens when we compute B transpose times B. So here's B transpose, where I've turned every row into a column, and I'm going to multiply that by the original matrix B. So my answer should be a 3 by 3 matrix, and to get the element here in the upper left corner, I need to multiply the first row by the first column. So that looks like what we just did, right? When we calculated uh, column 1 times column 1, it's the same computation. Of course it's the same computation because this row came from, it, since this is a row as part of B transpose, it came from the first column of B. So we're just doing the first column of B in row form times the first column of B. So that's just the computation we did. That has to equal 1. Now to get the next entry, entry in the first row and second column of the answer, we're going to do the first row of B transpose times the second column of B. But that's just the same thing as the first column of B, right, times the second column of B. So first column of B times the second column of B was 0. The next entry over here is going to come from the first row of B transpose times the third column of B. But that's the same as doing the first column of B times the third column of B. And since this is an orthogonal matrix, that needs to be 0. 
if we continue like that, we see that every single entry of this matrix is actually coming from a row of B transpose and a column of B, which is the same thing as coming from a column of B times a column of B. So those are always going to be zero if we're getting it from distinct columns, and we'll always get one if we're taking the dot product of the column with itself. Therefore, our answer is the identity matrix. And in fact, the same reasoning shows that for any orthogonal matrix, when we take the transpose and multiply by the matrix itself, we're destined to get the identity matrix. So that's our first nice property of orthogonal matrices. If we have an orthogonal matrix Q, then Q transpose by times Q is going to be the identity matrix. Another way of saying the same thing is that the inverse of an orthogonal matrix is just the same thing as its transpose, right? Inverses are unique, so if any matrix times Q gives us the identity, that matrix has to be the inverse of Q. Finally, if I take Q times Q transpose, the opposite order of what I did up here, that's the same thing as doing Q times Q inverse, and so I'll also get the identity matrix this direction. That last property actually reminds me of one more nice property of orthogonal matrices. Not only are the columns an orthonormal set, but the rows are also an orthonormal set. That's because when we take Q times Q transpose, we're multiplying rows of Q by the columns of Q transpose, but the columns of Q transpose are just coming from the rows of Q, therefore just multiplying the rows of Q by the rows of Q. And since we're getting to the identity matrix, that means that each row dot product itself gives us one, each row dotted with a different row gives us zero. So those rows are orthonormal. In this video, we saw that orthogonal matrices are matrices whose columns are orthonormal. Also, their rows are orthonormal. Also, if you take an orthogonal matrix times its transpose in either direction, you get the identity matrix. In other words, an orthogonal matrix's inverse is just its transpose.